right, so we got our movement working. Now let's jump back to our code here and think about also rotating things around. Okay, so we calculated um, the percentage we move across the screen here. Now let's try to calculate the rotation value. So let's define this variable called rotate and let's just say 360 and then we can maybe times that with the percentage we move and then divide by 100 and see that that should give a a good value that we can play around with okay and instead of zero here we will set x to rotate okay now down here where we uh, output our string we also need to add rotate and then put in second parameter here from interpolate on our x value which will be the rotate value so let's put rotate in here and then put we must put deg here for degree so it knows what kind of measure we are using. Okay. Let's try to save it and see if uh, we have some rotation going on now. So, oh, yeah, there seems to be some rotation going on as I'm I'm moving the cursor. We are also getting the rotation. The rotation seems like it's rotating the amount that seems natural okay it's good now this is uh, okay this can work but we kind of want to have these breakpoints set in place so when I start dragging stuff and uh, at some point I just wanted to jump to the next item I don't want to get stuck in between basically so to implement that we need to define a threshold so up here I'm just gonna define threshold and then let's put an arbitrary value for now and put 15 here. Okay. Now earlier we, de we defined this animating value and we're gonna need that one here because when we reach this breakpoint we want to disable this uh, hook here, use dragged updating values. We don't want that happening basically because when we do the uh, animation we don't want the m movement following hitting the breakpoint to uh, destroy our animation basically now let's try to do this so first we need to figure out in what direction we're going and um, we can do that by checking our move x if it's uh, below our threshold we know we are going we are moving the cursor to the left right we're going into minus values going left so here we might want to just update our values to minus 100. This will move it 100% okay, to the left. That means it will move a whole screen onto the next item. And that's what we want. Now since I'm updating move x in here, and I need to be doing that, and also I want, need to be updating rotate as well, I need to assign these values to left. All right, and for rotate, we just want to do a 360 rotate when we hit a breakpoint or our threshold, even. So I'm gonna put 360 here, okay? Now, we might also be in the other scenario where we are going in the other direction. So if our move x 
is bigger than our threshold, we are going right. So we just need to invert these values in here. And we should be Gucci. Now, this is okay. I'm sure you can refactor this to look a lot prettier, but at least it's kind of understandable for now. Now, besides setting these values and updating them here, we need to set our animating value so these animations stop from happening. All right. So we need to set animation or set animating to true in both cases. So here we are duplicating some more code. Okay, set animating to true. So in our use drag, we need to do at the top say if we are animating currently, don't do anything, just return. Okay, this will block and more animation from happening. This is very important, right? Now, after setting animating to true, we need a, to know when to set animating to false again. And there are different ways we can do that. Um, in this example, I will just use a set timeout, which is not super pretty, but it's a, an option. So set timeout, we can set a duration here. I'm just gonna put 1500, that's okay, I think. Actually, that's a little much, maybe. Let's just put 1000. So after a second, we want to set animating again to false. So we can keep animating things. And the same for down here, okay? Yeah, that looks good. Now, we should at this point be doing some, some kind of refactoring, at least refactor this animating part out. So let's find a function down here, call it animate next slide. And then put this code in here. Now we can call animate next slide in these two scenarios. Okay, Dalton. Now let's see if what happens in our project here. So, so far it seems like I'm hitting that breakpoint. Let's try refresh. So I'm dragging, I'm hitting that threshold and it jumps to the next item. But you can see as I click or again, I I need to reset, I get back to scratch. And that's because we don't have any variable tracking what picture we're currently looking at, what item are we currently looking at. So we need to be updating that. So let's jump back to the code here and add some state so we can keep track of that. So let's just call this state active item. And initially set it to zero. Okay. So when we animate to the next slide, we also need to increase this item or this value, or maybe decrease it. It depends what direction we're going in, right? If we're uh, pulling left side here, we want to increase the value, right? And if opposite, we want to decrease. So we could expand this function with a duration parameter. And then depending on direction set active item uh, to active item and then minus or plus depending on the direction. 
So let's say uh, let's just call it value, and then if the direction we get is left, we would like to increase this value, otherwise decrease it. Okay. So here we need to do plus value. Okay. Now we need to make sure we pass in left here and then right down here. Okay. Now we are updating our active item. So we are keeping track of what item is active on the screen. That's good. But we also need to use that active item value when we calculate the final move x and rotate x. Okay. So right before set, we need to redefine move x and our rotate function, our rotate variable. So for move x, we need to take the current value and then take 100. 100 is the value, is the amount of percent we move across the screen. So times the active item value. So if we are currently looking at active item two, that means we moved 200% across the screen. And then this value included. And similar for rotate, rotate plus in this case, 360 times the active item. Now let's see where we add in the over here. So if I start doing that, we get the same behavior as before. Now when I start moving stuff again, it's it's in the right spot now. It's pretty neat. It doesn't kick us back. If you look in the code here, we can see we're around 100% here. And the, because we updated that variable, it knows we are here. So because we added this code, it knows where we are. It's great. So if I move to the next item, it goes to the next item. If I move back, I move back. It's, it's working pretty well, see? And uh, that was actually all the code we needed to uh, to uh, make this animation happen using your spring. Okay. Uh, let's see if we're missing anything. Oh yeah, um, there are two checks we should be doing as well. Because let's say we are on the first page and for some reason we are going in the right. Oh, sorry, we are going in this direction. Oh, suddenly we are out of the scope of the page. So we should be doing some boundary checks. Oh, so if we are currently, let's say, uh, we are trying to move in uh, the right direction and our current item, oh, did I call it current item? Oh, I call it active item if active item is zero. So if we are on the first, first item, we can just return right away. We don't want to be animating. This is the lower boundary. Now, if we are going plus or minus even, and the active item is equal to the amount of items we have, so that would be data dot length, and because we index by zero, we're able to minus one here. If that's the case, also return. Okay, so 
these two boundary checks in place, we shouldn't be able to do something we don't, we not intend to do anyway. So if I'm trying to go right, it seems like it crashed actually because I made the boundary check before I defined move x. So let's put move x down here. Go back. Now I'm trying to drag it right here. I can't. It's nothing is happening when I do. But I can go left and left. And when I get here, nothing happens again if I try to go le left. It doesn't allow me. I can only go back. Okay. So our boundary checks are working. And uh, this is the final code. Uh, there are a bunch of properties for this use drag hook that can be used also to calculate the direction we're going and a bunch of other information but yeah this is uh, at least one way of doing it all right hope you guys learned something and uh, if you did leave a like hope to see you in the next one